life is unfair and there is a double standard for women. And I don't think these things are debated. Given that, Hatshepsut's story helps us to see how somebody saw that reality, took that reality on board, didn't deny it, didn't say it didn't exist, and moved around the blockades in her path to get what it was that she wanted. Hatshepsut was very aware of what people might have thought about a woman's power being self-motivated. And so she always depicted herself with great humility. Her statues do not ever show her in, in a, a pose of, of regal pride. She's always very carefully showing humility towards the gods and towards the position that she's in. Hatshepsut also knew that she had to link her rule to the entire society and that the entire society had to see the good of it. And that if she was too self-motivated or even perceived as being too self-motivated, then it would all be over. The reason we don't remember her, and this is really the, the crux of it all, is because she was so good. Because think about the women we do remember in our society, those female rulers, they're always the ones who either had the sexual affairs, got beaten in battle, um, ended up being the whore of Babylon. Those are the women that we like to tell tales about. And that's what our cultural memory really holds on to. It's almost like as biological creatures, when a woman takes power, we feel we need to memorialize that in a negative way and remember the failures and keep repeating those stories. And here we have a woman, Hatshepsut, who did everything right, who was incredibly successful, and yet no one can pronounce her name. And she's the one that, that nobody tells tales about because it's not in a patriarchal society's best interest to tell those tales.